Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is AJ with Beer City Woodworking. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, please consider joining our team. We're always cooking something up new here in the shop and we'd love to have you following along. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And if you have seen our videos before, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a planter out of cedar 2x4 that I have laying around. These planters are nice, small, and manageable. Really you can make them to any size you want, but I'm going to make a nice little square so I can put it on my coffee table. These make excellent gifts. You can also resell them on Etsy stores. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to make them yourself. The first step is to measure out 12 inches on your two x four and cut two pieces. After you've cut those pieces down to 12 inches, what you want to do is resaw them. You can either accomplish this with a table saw or a band saw. Good evening, everybody. As you can see, sometimes with resawing, you get striations in the board, so we just want to plane these smooth. So now that we have those planed up, we have two pieces of lumber that are 5 8 inch thick. As you can see, after you run those through the planer, they're perfectly smooth, gets rid of all those striations that you'll get from the table saw after uh, resawing or from a band saw after resawing. Now if you don't want to resaw your 2x4s, you don't have to, you could use the full thickness and usually when you make a planter for outdoors that's bigger, that's what you would do, but since I'm using mine for inside on a coffee table and I don't want it to take up a ton of space and I still need to leave room for the roots of the plant, I wanted to resaw mine so it'd be nice and thin. What I'm doing here is cutting each board in half and that's gonna give me my sides of my base. To say organize, I figured out which butts were going up against which and I labeled them as such. This can help prevent future confusion later when you actually go to put the box together. So now we're going to cut the 45 so we can put the box together. I'm using my miter box. You could also use your table saw, but my miter box is pretty accurate so I just wanted to use that. Make sure that each piece has an opposite 45 on it. You don't want to cut the same 45 on one piece or your box isn't going to go together. the chipboard bottom to sit in we need to cut dados. The first step is to be setting your table saw depth. I'm setting mine to an eighth of an inch. It's very important to make sure that you cut all your pieces on the same side so that way you don't get one flip-flopped which is why we labeled them earlier to be able to keep track of things like that. Now the chipboard was a little thicker than the kerf of my blade, so what I did was I just moved my fence over a touch, cut it on a test sheet, made sure it fit, and then I cut the rest of my boards. Now I'm measuring out my chipboard, you just want to make sure that you leave an extra quarter inch because each dado goes in an eighth of an inch, and an eighth plus an eighth is a quarter. If it doesn't fit perfectly, you can always just guess and check and take it down a little bit on your table saw.
so we got the box dry fitted and it fits like a glove. Now if yours isn't fitting, you can always use your table saw sled to just trim it down a little bit at a time and keep guessing and checking until you get it dialed in perfectly. Fortunately, since I've built these before, mine was perfect. So now it's everybody's favorite time, the glue up. Glue ups with 45s can be a little complicated sometimes, so you want to make sure that you're going to have some blue tape on hand. It's always handy in a situation where you're gluing up 45s, and I'll show you why. Now you'll notice that I'm putting blue tape on the outside of the glue up. The blue tape is going to hold those 45s in place so that way they don't slide out of alignment when you're making the glue up and clamping them together. Also when gluing up end grains it is important to use a good amount of glue because that end grain just sucks the glue right in. like to use ratchet clamps but I just can't stand ratchet clamps I'm not very good at using them so what I do is I put a clamp on one side and barely tighten it so that way it doesn't go out of alignment and I put another clamp on the other way I tighten them at the exact same time with the exact same pressure to make sure that it doesn't pop apart this creates a really tight joint I've just found that it works best So we got the clamps off our box and it now looks like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some trim around the outside and that's gonna make it kind of hard to hit with the orbital sander. So before we do that, I'm gonna hit it with my orbital sander, sand it down to a 220 grit so it's nice and smooth. And then we'll move on to the trim. time for the trim. As you recall earlier, we cut two 12 inch boards and resawed them in half, planed them down. these down to 7 8 inches thick, I found that that gave me a good overhang. So we have our trim pieces that we cut on our table saw. And we want to cut these on 45s as well. Now cutting 45s at this point can be a little tricky. You want to make sure that your math is on point. So make sure you measure the inside part of this box from here to here or you can even just lay it out on top and draw where they're supposed to be and guess check and fit them to make sure that you don't screw it up. Math can be hard, man. Start by cutting one side down to a 45 degree angle. Measure the inside of your box and then transfer that measurement over to the piece. Make sure that you keep your pieces labeled with where they're going on the top or the bottom and which side. Sometimes when you're woodworking, things can get off a little bit, so it's always good to keep pieces where they're gonna be. So just rinse and repeat this process until you have all your pieces cut. Again, it's always better to be safe than sorry, so I'm gonna tape this up and put it on top of my box to make sure everything sits flush. Awesome, so we've got these all cut and labeled one through four, top and bottom. And before I glue them to the planter box, I wanna glue those each together on their own first. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I think it's gonna make it easier to clamp them to the planter box with two glue ups than it would be to try to get the 45s perfect while gluing it to the planter box flush. 
If you think it's going to be easier the other way, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see pictures of your own. We can all laugh at each other together and uh, gotta love a project with multiple glue ups, you know? Once again, I'm using blue tape and the two clamp method. Now there is a reason we did choose cedar to be the wood for this planter box, and that's because cedar retains moisture really well and it doesn't warp or crack. That's why you'll see a lot of planter boxes made out of cedar. But just to be safe, because the bottom of the chipboard isn't cedar and can get nasty, I like to put a liner in there. I just grab any plastic that you have, a trash bag, a big Ziploc bag, and cut a rectangle out of it. Then take a screw gun with a decent sized drill bit and drill two or three holes in the bottom to allow for drainage. Take a staple gun and staple the planter into place. You will want to have something to catch the drainage underneath. That's why we put the trim around the bottom of the box since it makes it sit up just high enough to slide something under there. You could cut the bottom of a pop bottle or a pop can. It's going to be completely hidden so it doesn't need to be pretty. Now we gotta cut that plastic down because we don't want that hanging out the side. Now don't cut it all the way down flush with the inside of your box. Take a look at what I'm doing here. I'm cutting it about halfway through the thickness of my board. So that way when I put my top trim piece on, it'll actually cover all of that up, but the plastic will still wrap around the edge so when you go to put dirt and water in there, it won't get behind the plastic. Can be stressful and there are a good amount of glue ups in this project but we're almost there just keep bearing with me now it's important to pay attention to this part right here you'll see how i cut down my liner well you want to make sure that there's still a good amount of wood exposed because you need the trim to glue to the wood if you just have plastic it's going to glue to the plastic and it's not going to stick to the wood and it's going to fall apart that's why it's important to be accurate when you're cutting that liner down Let that sit for a while. When it's done, hit it with some sandpaper, and then you can put the final finish on it. And it's that easy, everybody. It looks great inside my house. I'm super happy with it. My fiance is super happy with it, and I know yours will be too. If you learned something from this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and let me know what you think. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.